As the Ondo State Governorship election draws closer, the political rift between Ondo State Governor Uluwaru Timi Akeredolu and his deputy Agbola Ajayi has taken a new dimension as the later claims the police force headquarters has restored his security details. He is also alleging a plot to impeach him, but said that it reportedly suffered a setback as the supposed impeachment impeachment meeting failed when only nine out of the 19 invited members of the assembly were present. And I urged the lawmakers to shun another plan to move the next meeting of the impeachment plot. Joining us to discuss this is the Chief Press Secretary to the Deputy Governor of Odo State, Baba Tokwe Ukeowo, and Public Affairs Analyst, Jide Benson. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us on the program. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Now, I will start with you, um, Mr. Babatokwe. Deputy Governor has alleged there is a plan by the governor to use 19 out of the 23 APC members of the State House of Assembly to impeach him. But that has suffered a setback. What is your take? Is this factual? On our in our camp, we don't tell lies. We say the truth the way it is. We don't color it. If you can remember that last week Wednesday, we said the security details are uh, the policemen attached to the deputy governor were withdrawn. But yesterday they returned them. And promptly, we give you the statement uh, saying that the deputy governor's security, uh, I mean, the policemen attached to him had been uh, restored. And we don't tell lies. So it is the truth that uh, they are planning they, every day, day in, day out, to make sure that they impeach the deputy governor. But for now, the, the plan has not worked. All right, and let's, the let's get uh, Mr. Benson's perspective on this. Do you indeed believe there is a plot to impeach uh, the deputy governor? Well, there will continue to be denials. And of course, because the deputy governor, Mr. Agwala Jai, has moved, he has, to some extent, murdered sleep. Um, Kiru himself has murdered sleep because... Um, his supposed, his supposed man Friday is now an opposition deputy governor, and therefore he'll do everything within his powers to ensure that he clips his wings. Um, unfortunately, thus far, um, it doesn't look like the governor is having his way. Um, in, the, in the days to come, we will be able to tell whether indeed there is a plan to get him out of office or not. But I think that um, the dead governor is on the crest of what Atiku Apovaka did in 2006 or 2007 when he left the PDP as a sitting vice president and there was a lot of litigation. So there's a precedent to the extent that a sitting deputy governor can leave, it can leave his party and not have to vacate his seat. All right. Um, what would be your take on strong suggestions that he should step down on a moral ground that this will also um, gain him uh, some, you know, some steps among the people should he emerge the governorship candidate after PDP? Sorry, I, I didn't get that. I didn't get the early part of the question. Uh, I'm talking about a suggestion that he should, that um, Mr. Jai should step down on moral ground since he has left the APC for the PDP. And there are those who are also saying this will be good for him because it will allow him gain more grounds with the people should he emerge the governorship candidate of the PDP. There's no morality. There's no morality here. <laughs> I mean, his, his position is backed constitutionally by law. Um, that he has left the APC does not mean he should leave the office of deputy governor. If anything, the efforts, the alleged efforts being made by the um, lawmakers to take him out is the only way to go. Because by being, by being a sitting deputy governor, don't forget that he enjoys the community, he enjoys some perks of office, and that still gives him access to be able to know what's going on in the camp of 
what is what he will now refer to as his enemy. But if we were to go the route of morality, I mean, we may we may be here for long. Morality and legality are two very different things. It's a battle for his political future, and so uh, morality will play very little here. All right, let me come to you, um, Mr. Okeowo. Uh, the chief press secretary to uh, Governor Akere Dolu uh, refuted uh, the claims uh, that uh, you said your, your, part, your group don't lie, uh, describing the impeachment allegation as another lie. They are calling you outright as lying. He also said that there was... Um, that they deliberately allowed the additional lies when he talked about the uh, reinstatement of security for the deputy governor. Uh, the administration, though, agrees, like Mr. Benson has highlighted, that Mr. Jai remains the deputy governor. What's your take to the government saying your camp is lying blatantly? You see, I sometimes I wonder why. It is the policy of a government to tell lies. Sincerely speaking, I've not been in government, and I don't know that there's always a deliberate plot by a government to tell lies. When we, when the security and when the policemen were withdrawn, there was a signal to that effect from the office of the commissioner for. Commissioner of Police, there was a signal to that effect. When they now restored it yesterday, Monday, there was also a counter signal from uh, Abuja, signed by an AIG, directing the CP to restore the police uh, the policemen, and the policemen had since resumed. I don't know where. The, the, the falsehood is. I don't know why a government, a city government will deliberately, will deliberately tell lies against the deputy governor. Anyway, that has been their uh, uh, policy since the beginning of this administration. There have been deliberate acts to malign his person, to paint him in a bad light, and then Eventually, when the man that were, them, there were explanation as to the fact that first that he was supposed to um, request for a certain number of security personnel, but he chose uh, to uh, request for less than that figure. They also said he deliberately asked some of the person's security personnel who he wasn't comfortable with to leave. So, what would you say to that? Is that a lie as well? That is, I'm telling you that it, they are telling lies. So who do we believe, sir? You, you say they are lying. They say you are lying. You know, for the fact that I'm using this phone for Zoom that you are calling me now, I will have read the signal to you. There is a signal to that effect. Policemen should uh, the, the, the DCP in charge of uh, uh, information, uh, Mr. Frank Kuba, could uh, shed more light on this. All right, let's, let's, let's get uh, Mr. Benson's perspective. Let's get Mr. Benson's perspective as well. No, are no, you I'm worried I mean, that there is something we are missing in all of this? There are those who allege that the state government isn't being uh, completely upfront with the narrative that they are putting out there. Is that rubbish talk? Or should we pay further attention? Well, um, it's difficult to take a position on it because this looks like a camp of two liars, if you permit me to use that. They are saying that the, um, the governor's camp is lying and the governor's camp is also saying that the deputy governor's camp is lying. Now, it is not out of place for the deputy governor to cry wolf where there is none, it possibly to get public sympathy. It is also not out of place for the governor's camp to do everything to disparage the governor's camp and what to to make him open to harm, to keep him in a position where he's open to harm or what have you. But it's at least a good thing that as deputy governor, the security details attached to his position has been restored. Whether it was removed in the first place or not, or whether he schemed that they stay away from him to carry public sympathy. As I said earlier, as the days go by, we would eventually find out who is telling the truth and who is being economical with the truth. But um, I do hope that um, Edo will not find itself in Ondo State.
All right. Um, this country prides itself. Um, I'll, I'll come back to you, uh, Mr. Nkewa, for your final thought. But let's also give uh, Mr. Benson some talk time. Uh, this country prides itself as one that practices a multi-party system. Yet the conversation continues. It seems to revolve around the APC and the PDP. Where are the others? Don't we have other men capable, aside those presented by both parties? Uh, well, in every race, you'd have contenders and you'd have pretenders. Um, at the moment, a lot of the other parties are more like pretenders. I would have expected that um, since the end of the 2019 elections, talks about alliances and mergers would have advanced at such a time as this, so that as we approach 2023, we are seeing a formidable third force that people can begin to rally around. Um, time and again, people have said that the APC and the PDP are two sides of the same coin. And there were other parties that are referred to as mushroom parties that made some inroads. Maybe they won one or two seats in the state houses of assembly, on the House of Representatives, or in the Senate. I can mention the YPP, I can mention the Zenith Labour Party, I can mention the SDP, I can mention the ADP, I can mention the ADC. Such parties by now should be coalescing their efforts such that they become a formidable third force. We talk about APC today because um, gladiators about four political parties, the APGA, the ECN, the MPP, and one other decided to come together. And that's the only way that the PDP and the um, APC can be put perpetually on their, toes, on their toes. We need a formidable third force. And I'm sad that um, the politicians in those parties are not looking in that direction. All right, Mr. Benson, um, thank, you, thank you very much for your contribution on the program. Thank you. All right, Mr. Okewa, um, your final thoughts, and then um, tell us quickly what your party will do going forward with the guideline given by INEC on giving them seven days' notice. Will you comply? Um, let me say that I'm not a member of any political party. Okay. I'm a journalist, and uh, I am speaking for uh, Mr. Ajay. Agbola Alfred Ajayi, the deputy governor of Ondo State. So the party, at the appropriate time, we issue its own statements and uh, show compliance. But what I'm saying about the flaw by government to speak for police, I've not seen where a government speaks for the police. I know that the police should have come up. It's, it should have come up itself and say when we restored or we didn't restore. But why is the government so concerned about the withdrawal of uh, police only attached to the governor? That means the government wants to harm the deputy governor, and that is my fear. All right. It shouldn't come. Up, it shouldn't come to that level where. The government will be speaking for the police. The police has its hierarchy, has its spokesperson in every state and in Abuja. So when the government is now saying the deputy governor lied about his own security, it's uncalled for. All it's right, uh, just one, I just need um, on. a, a yes or no answer for you, from you so we can wrap things up. Do you think your principal should resign because he has moved parties like it's been suggested? Yes, my goal... A person has said it that we have precedents. Even precedences, we have that one of Chokoto in the last election. The deputy to uh, Amino Tambua, he never resigned. All right. He stood uh, for the election. We have that of uh, Atiku Vice Sabasojo, he never resigned. We have one in Ogun State, uh, Mr. Shegunade Shegun, he never resigned. I'll take your response to mean yeah, that he so don't, you don't agree he has to resign. So thank you very much sir, for your uh, time and your thoughts with us on the program. You're welcome. All right, we'll take a short break for our PLUS report. And when we return, I'll be giving my take to stay with us. Justice Tao Tao of the Federal High Court Abuja has awarded 15 million naira against the Nigerian police force over the killing of three members of the Islamic movement of Nigeria.
The three men were alleged to have been killed by the police on July 22, 2019, while on a peaceful protest to demand the freedom of their leader, Ibrahim El Sazaki, and his wife, Zinat, at the Federal Secretariat, Abuja. Justice Tawo also ordered the National Hospital, Abuja, to immediately release the three corpses in its morgue. The followers of El Sazaki who were killed on the 22nd of July 2019 was an aberration of the law. It was not done in accordance with the law. The court awarded all our reasons except for the issue of publication for apology. The court declared that the killing was illegal. The court ordered for the immediate release of their cops for burial in, in line with Islamic rights. The court also awarded five million naira to each of the applicants. Some are death trans. Because, in fact, the court emphatically mentioned that there is no price tag, tag to be put on the life of any Nigerian. The court so much valued the life of Nigerians to that extent. We appreciate the court for that wonderful judgment. And we look forward to the court standing its authority on such cases so that the court will stop the police rascality in such manner. I was even surprised that uh, they now filed a motion that some of them were killed and that uh, uh, were deposited at uh, Sokoro Metama General Hospital. And if you see the deposit, the, the, the processes filed by the Asokuro General Hospital, no, no, nobody was identified. And the IPO that they stated that they posited cops there are not the IPO who investigated the IML matter. So those cops have no business with the case before the court at all. That's what I was trying to inform the court, that the court was misled into, uh, you know, arriving at uh, But they will take their proper step, we will file the list of processes so that the court will be put in a better position. I am honestly worried about holding elections during a pandemic, but I see logic in not letting the virus store life completely. And I also take some solace from knowing that some countries like Burundi, Guinea and Mali all held one form of election or the other since the outbreak of COVID-19. Even then, there is the question of turnout during the process by citizens amid concerns about contracting the virus. My worries are further heightened by the fact that our facilities are not enough to handle any astronomical increase in the number of patients. Still, the fact remains that if elections are not held, there would be a vacuum and our constitution does not take cognizance of the situation we are in. It must be said that it is pure politics that is playing out between the governor and his deputy in Ondo State. Whether the deputy resigns, to be honest, doesn't really bother me because we know what the end game is likely to be. I have said this before, and with your permission, I will reiterate it tonight. I didn't talk about the politics that we discussed. Let's not be distracted by all of these shenanigans and politicking. Let's be more committed to assessing what their plans for the people are when the time does come for campaigns, no matter who emerges as candidate. Citizens must be wiser to these distractions as exhilarating as they may be. They are not the issues. Our continued focus in whoever emerges must be what can they do to better your life and mine and how they will go about doing that. And that is my take tonight. I thank you for your kind attention. While the program lasted, it will return same time tomorrow. Until then, please be well, be safe, and be the best possible version of a Nigerian you can be.